Hi there, it's Jeff here again from Picture Time. We did a video to show how we built the shiplap colorful wall that many of you have seen and commented on. And we also did these barn doors behind us and a lot of people who have visited our home when we refinished our basement have commented like that they love the barn doors. My dad and I actually built them and a friend of mine is refinishing his basement, his name's Matt, and he wants to build barn doors just like ours. So I'm gonna show you how we built them. I looked all around YouTube to try and find a helpful instructional video on how to make barn doors. And there's a lot of good ones out there, but I couldn't find exactly what we wanted. So I kind of combined a bunch of different ideas and put them into one. And also we tried to do this whole project for under $300, including the rails that go above the doors that hang it. These doors are actually built out of pine siding. It's tongue and groove siding. We got ours at Menards, but any home improvement store like a Home Depot or Lowe's should carry this type of wood. The wood that we bought was under $5 per board. Basically, we calculated how wide the boards are, how many boards we were gonna need. And for Matt's boards, we were able to purchase all the lumber for under $150. The mounting brackets, the rails, wheels, and the guide and stuff like that that mounts on the door, we purchased that on Amazon. I'll share a link in the description below with where we got all the product on Amazon. One challenge that we faced though is our door space was pretty wide and the package that we got on Amazon for the rail that the door hardware rides on was two pieces and it just didn't quite fit right. So we ended up going to a steel supply store we got a piece of steel cut the exact width to the room that we needed and then painted it black to match the rest of the hardware. You can decide what you want to do, whether you want to use the rail that's included, depending on how your size of your room and your application is. But it's also possible to buy a piece of steel for, ours cost $13 um, to complete the project and not have a break in that upper rail. We're building barn doors today. We wanted to open up the space in the spare bedroom and we wanted to have a signature piece when somebody enters the basement and that's gonna be our barn doors. Before we closed up the walls with sheetrock, we mounted a two by six board in between all the studs to reinforce where the door would hang. Now, if your room is already finished and you're looking to do this, we can also supplement the strength that you mount to by putting a board on the outside of the wall as a part of your door frame to mount the hardware to. And that way you can mount that board to anchor it to the studs. And then with your mounting hardware, once that's spaced nicely, if you miss a stud, it's not that critical because you'll be able to support it with that board that goes across the top. Once you've worked out how you're gonna support your doors, you wanna make sure that you get really good measurements. With those measurements, you'll be able to determine how long of boards you need to buy and how many you need to put together to make the door the correct width for your space. We're probably gonna overlap an inch or two on the top and leave about three quarters of an inch on the very, very bottom so that doesn't rub on our floor covering. So Jeff and I already picked out the boards that we wanted. Wanted to make sure those were really straight. Uh, brought them into our room to, for a couple days to make sure that they reacclimate to the humidity levels that are in here. So we should be good with the boards. Uh, we're gonna lay those out tongue and groove style here. This is the first one. With board selection, for me, I want a really knotty and consistent look on the door. Now there's the front and the back too. So Jeff, if you wanna zoom in here. This one I have actually upside down compared to the orientation of the other ones. You can see how this is cornered off here, um, somewhat rounded, and these are flat. We're gonna eventually make those look the same, but we want, for our starting point, we're gonna to wanna to rotate this board so they're all facing the same way. They gotta make sure that all the edges are either all flat or they're all the curved side. This is a step you don't have to do, but it's a step that's preferred to make the front of the barnwood door look the same as the back. We're simply gonna take a router and make the other edge tapered off. Oh, we just got done routing the square side of the edges so they mirror the front side. Pushing those puppies together. Ours is measuring 34 inches wide. So we've got a couple inches to flex because we can take it an inch, two inches, or three inches either way. But together they just need to cover the cell that we have open. One other thing to note is when you lay out your door and you're preparing to trim the tongue and groove off the edge boards, you want to make sure that you trim the edges off so that your framing boards line up so that the door panel is centered. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to trim some edge boards. 
32 and a half. For the edge boards, we used the same exact lumber that we used to build the actual door panel, but we trimmed off the tongue and grooves off of each side. We made one cut with the table saw at four and a half inches, and then turned the board around, and the second cut at three and seven eighths of an inch. So all the edge boards, or the framing boards, were three and seven eighths inches wide. We take that into account when we use measurements to build the frame on the outside of our door. One of the other things we like to point out is what kind of screws we use to fasten everything. We opted for the square head. We went with an inch and a quarter so that it doesn't punch all the way through. We finished off both sides of our doors. So when they're closed and we're in this kind of guest room area, the folks in the guest room have a cool view too. How you actually frame your doors is really personal preference. You can see on ours in our home, we wanted kind of an X pattern when they came together. Matt chose to do his a little bit differently. The one thing that I would recommend though is to have a board that goes across the top on both the top and the bottom so that you can band all the tongue and groove boards together. I also recommend putting the bottom framing boards lower than the bottom of the wood in the center of the door so that you have a channel. We made a channel in the bottom, then we made a little steel L bracket and mounted a piece of oak under there to ride in that channel. And that way, when the doors slide open and close, they don't wobble or sway or bang up against your wall. When you're cutting your cross boards for framing, you can use a specific measurement and make sure that you get your angles cut just absolutely perfectly. What we did was lay our trimmed framing board across the door and then we just drew a line where we wanted to make the cut and we cut the cut at the top and the bottom of the crossbar with our skill saw. The gaps aren't absolutely perfect, but it's a barn door, not a piece of fine Amish furniture. One of the last steps to get a really nice smooth finish and so you kind of clean up the door. We use the belt sander for that and then we'll go ahead and come back with the hand sander for everything that's in between. My dad and I used a router on the door frames in the middle. You don't have to use a router, you can use a palm sander and just smooth those corners off. But then I recommend giving a nice sand with 120 to 300 grit sandpaper just to smooth the door finish off really nice before you stain and varnish it. As far as finishing your doors goes, it's really up to personal preference. On our doors, we used a Minwax Jacobean stain and then came over it with a fast drying polyurethane clear satin varnish. You can paint the doors, you can stain them, you can stain and varnish them, you can leave them natural wood. It's really totally up to you. Matt's going with a classic gray, and then we'll come back over the top with a clear satin poly. Well, Matt, those doors sure turned out great. Thanks for watching this project. If you like this project and others like it, please like, please share, and please subscribe. This channel is dedicated to making memories for your family. We love to travel, we have a lot of cruise videos and tours and stuff on this site, but also the idea of finishing off spaces in your home where you can make memories with your family, and that's what we're committed to. We're Picture Time, your story in pictures, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching.